World Trade Center Building No. 7. On September 11, 2001, it was one of the casualties of the terrorist attacks on that horrific day. Building 7's sudden and shocking collapse has been overshadowed by the fate of the Twin Towers. But from an engineering standpoint, it is the greater mystery. We were surprised that Tower 7 collapsed, uh, we being the team that investigated what occurred on that day. There was some damage to Tower 7 caused by the debris that hit it from Tower 1, but uh, the damage was certainly not similar in scope or magnitude to that caused by the aircraft hitting Towers 1 and 2. The only positive aspect of this building's demise is that it fell seven hours after the two main towers. Everyone had been evacuated, and even though the 47-story building collapsed in on itself in under 10 seconds, no one was killed. World Trade Center 7 was completed in 1987. It had approximately 1.8 million square feet, uh, 47 stories, and was roughly 600 feet tall. Each of the floors was approximately 40,000 square feet, which is a roughly the size of a football field and equal to the size of the floor plate on each of the towers. The building was a good building. It was soundly designed. Uh, it would still be standing if not for 9-11. And it was state of the art at the time. Absolutely. One of the challenges the engineers faced in designing World Trade Center 7 was finding a way to erect the building over an electric company substation that already existed on the north side of the site. As a result, we had to do very many, I'll use the word tricks, transferring of column loads, uh, carrying loads either on cantilevers or on truss systems. Um, it was a challenging project at the time. Analysis of the collapse of number seven, which had been burning out of control since the collapse of tower one seven hours earlier, seems to indicate the initial failure occurred somewhere between the fifth and seventh floors. This is where the transfer trusses were built to carry the load over the Con Edison substation. The way the building fell supports the idea that at least one of the trusses was weakened by the fires in the building and gave way. Once one of those trusses went down, then because of the way everything was interconnected in the floor system, uh, it pulled down the rest of the building. Normally, uh, when you have a structural failure, uh, you carefully go through the debris field, uh, looking at each item, photographing every beam as it collapsed and every uh, uh, column where it is in the ground, and you pick them up very carefully and you uh, look at each element. We were unable to do that in the case of Tower 7. The wreckage from Tower 7 was mixed in with the debris from the other destroyed or damaged buildings and removed from the site so rescue and recovery efforts could continue. We then have to ask, why did the building fail on 9-11? Well, there are a couple of things we could look at. One is, perhaps the column didn't have the right amount of fireproofing. Well, we have no indication that this was a substandard building at all. It is certainly possible that the debris that started the fire in Tower 7, this is the debris from Tower 1 when it collapsed into Tower 7, that that debris knocked off some of the fireproofing. It doesn't take much fireproofing to be removed for the steel to fail. One theory suggests the steel around the fifth floor was superheated by diesel fuel discharged from broken pipes, supplying the building's emergency generators. But the explanation may be simpler. The building caught fire at 10.30 a.m. when Tower 1 collapsed. The water pipes supplying the sprinkler systems were also damaged and the fire department made the decision to allow an evacuated building to burn for the next seven hours in favor of trying to save the lives of those trapped in the rubble of the Twin Towers. If you allow it to burn long enough, it's going to get past the fireproofing material and it's going to cook the steel and the steel is going to yield. To ensure against future high-rise disasters, Many different agencies are involved in the ongoing effort to determine the exact cause of the failure. However, this has not stopped the construction of a new building. We have to rebuild on that site. We have to rebuild on the, on the World Trade Center site. Uh, if, we, if we didn't, then we lose. And we ain't gonna lose. 
just a little more than a year after 9-11, construction began on a new World Trade Center number no. 7. Since engineers knew it was to be the first building to rise from the ashes, they made safety features a top priority in its design. It's going to be 52 stories uh, uh, when it's completed, 750 feet tall in all. Up above us you see, uh, and all around this floor, you see fireproofing. Uh, what we've done that's different, that's beyond the code, and indeed uh, beyond normal practice in buildings, is we've made the, the fireproofing five times as durable as required by code. And fireproofing can withstand all kinds of circumstances, and that's a very important safety development. The stairs are 20% wider than required, which will allow people to evacuate quicker and emergency teams to move more freely within the building. Beyond standard emergency lighting, the stairways will have track lights on the floor similar to airliners, and if that fails, all the railings and stairs are being marked with photoluminescent paint that glows in the dark. Probably the single most important safety innovation in this building is that all of the life safety systems of this building are encased in a massive, two foot thick, in most places, concrete wall. That assures that in the event of an emergency, the life safety systems that support a quick and successful evacuation, the stairs, the, the water standpipes that support sprinklering, emergency lighting, emergency communication, are all protected. The concrete that's being used in the core and elsewhere in the, uh, uh, in the building is what you call high strength concrete, similar to what's used in military bunkers. The new World Trade Center 7 building, like the original, is being built over the Con Ed substation. But the structural load is being handled in a different way. The structure of the exterior of the building relates to the Con Ed station, substation uh, with a belt wall uh, that takes place just above uh, the level of the substation, where we transfer the loads from the office building so that they're distributed throughout the exterior of the Con Ed substation at the base. There was pride and determination in the builders of the new World Trade Center 7. Scheduled for completion in early 2006, it represents the finest in current building design and is symbolic of the resilience of a nation. Tenants of World Trade Center 7 included the IRS, the U.S. Secret Service, and New York City's Office of Emergency Management. Engineering disasters will return on Modern Marvels. <laughs>